dear brothers and sisters, before we start, I uh, just want to know, uh, announce that uh, one brother has just arrived here. His mother has passed away. Please make dua for her. And our dear brother, Ahmad Alamin, who is a member of our, our committee, or was a member of our uh, trustees, uh, his mother passed away two, two days ago. Please remember them both in your du'as. I've also had relatives in South Africa who passed away recently. And uh, make du'a for all, for all Muslims who have passed away recently, whether through COVID or through any other reason. And may Allah Ta'ala grant them Jannah Firdaus, magnify their good deeds, forgive them for their shortcomings, and give comfort and strength to all their families, inshallah. Ameen. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونؤذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يدلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد ورسوله I turn away from shaitan, the cursed one. I begin in the name of Allah, most kind, most merciful. All praise is due to Allah. We praise him and we seek help from him. We ask forgiveness from him. We repent to him and we seek refuge in Allah for, from our own evils and our own bad deeds. Anyone who is guided by Allah is truly guided and anyone who has been left astray will find no one to guide him. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the only one without any partner. And I bear witness that Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, be aware of Allah with correct awareness and awe inspired awareness and die not except as Muslims. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu tuqullaha wa qulu qawlan sadida yuslih lakum amalakum wa yaghfir lakum dunubakum wa may yuhdillaha wa rasoola faqad faza fawzan azima. O you who believe, be aware of Allah and speak a straightforward word. He will forgive your sins and repair your deeds. And whoever takes Allah and his prophet as a guide has already achieved a mighty victory. In the opening verse of Surah Nisa, Allah says, O mankind, show reverence towards your guardian Lord who created you from a single person. Created of like nature his mate and from the two of them scattered like seeds, countless men and women. Be conscious of Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights. And show reverence towards the wombs that bore you. Show reverence towards the wombs that bore you, your mothers. And we just had two mothers pass away recently. Show reverence to them, for surely Allah ever watches over you. My dear sisters and brothers, events in Afghanistan are unfolding rapidly. The whole world is waiting to see what happens next. Will there be more bloodshed, revenge, waves of refugees fleeing for safety? Or will there be a different outcome this time? One that stops the bloodshed, stops the violence, and brings a new era of peace and reconciliation in that troubled part of the world. 14 and a half centuries ago, our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, entered the gates of Makkah as a conqueror. But he entered without violence. He forgave his enemies. He conquered their hearts instead. I'm sure most of you know the story. So I won't go into the details. He was leading 10,000 well-armed men 
He could easily have hunted down his enemies and punished them. They had killed, tortured and oppressed so many of his followers. For so many years, there could have been a bloodbath in Makkah. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not a man of revenge. The Holy Quran describes him as وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy unto all the worlds, unto all the nations. Imagine the people of Makkah, the Quraysh, waiting there in fear and trepidation of what might come. They all knew the Arab tradition of tribal justice and they expected the worst. But the Prophet وسلم, gave them a general amnesty and saying that he forgave those who had harmed him and his people just as Joseph, Nabi Yusuf السلام, forgave his brothers. The response was incredible. Not only was there a collective sigh of relief, but people were so grateful for the mercy that was being shown to them that virtually the entire population of Makkah embraced Islam. So that's how we win hearts, not by taking revenge, not by satisfying our bruised egos, but by being merciful. When you have the whip hand or you have the sword in your hand and you have the full power to unleash your anger and your revenge on somebody, Allah loves those who are merciful. In recent times, and let's just, uh, sorry, uh, those who nowadays have the power to take revenge might well consider this wonderful example from history. In recent times, Nelson Mandela showed mercy when he became president of South Africa after 27 years in prison and almost 200 years of oppression of his people. He also could have started a bloodbath and got his people to take revenge. But he forgave his oppressors. He invited them to confess their sins. He set up a Truth and Reconciliation Commission where all those people who had done these atrocities could come forward and confess what they'd done, confront their victims, confront the, not the, some of the victims were dead. They killed them, they'd been murdered, but they, they confronted the families. They were sobbing, they were crying, there was complete, it was a complete healing and cathartic experience. And they were so successful that the British government invited Mandela's advisors to help them bring peace in Northern Ireland. They were, no, not many people know about this, but the peace in Northern Ireland is very largely due to South African advisors who came to show the Brits their, their previous colonial masters how to bring harmony and peace between people. And I mentioned Nelson Mandela in this khutbah for a very good reason, because he loved Muslims. Just outside the prison where he was kept for 27 years on Robben Island, the only other building on that whole island which isn't part of the prison is the burial place of Sheikh Abdullah Mataram. Now who is Sheikh Abdullah Mataram? He was the first freedom fighter in South Africa. He fought the Dutch who were trying to colonize Indonesia. And he was such a big troublemaker, they thought, don't keep him in Indonesia, send him to Africa, send him away, we will be out of trouble. But he became an inspiration to Nelson Mandela. And Mandela, every Friday he saw the Imam, Imam whom I know well, Imam, uh, Imam Abdullah, who came to visit him. He came to do, lead the, the, the Juma prayers on the island for the Muslims. And Mandela had great respect for the Muslims, so that when he became president, he appointed the first minister of justice was Abdullah Omar. He wanted a Muslim minister of justice. So this is how a good deed and mercy, the example of our prophet's mercy, affects even people who are not Muslims, who have learned from him. We can only hope that in Afghanistan and elsewhere, Muslims and other world leaders can learn to win over hearts of and minds of the enemies instead of just bombing and killing, suicide bombings and all the other things. 
our world has today seen enough of violence and revenge. Let us all pray for peace and reconciliation. Let us turn to heaven and ask Allah to help those who have lost their homes, who have lost their loved ones in wars, fires, floods, droughts, man-made disasters and natural disasters all around the world. We can also do our bit, my dear brothers and sisters. We are not helpless. We can dig into our pockets. We can give up some of our time, help the charities. There are so many charities doing good work, collecting medicines, clothing, and helping those who are most in need. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allah and his angels send blessings on Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam O oh, you who believe, send your blessings on him and salute him with a worthy salutation Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alameen innaka hamidun majeem. O oh Allah, send your greetings on Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family just as you greeted, send greetings on Ibrahim and his family. O oh Allah, send your blessings on Nabi Muhammad and his family just as you send blessings on Nabi Ibrahim and his family. In both worlds, you are praiseworthy and exalted. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi rawlin ul Glory to Allah, praise to Allah. There is no power, no strength except from Allah. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah is muqallibul qulub. He is the turner of hearts. So let us turn our pleas to heaven and as, as Prophet Nabi Muhammad وسلم, did and let us implore Allah in one of Nabi Muhammad's favorite du'as Ya muqallibul qulub thabbit qalbi ala dinik It's a very simple du'a, very simple, to, very easy to remember Ya muqallibul qulub thabbit qalbi ala dinik O turner of the hearts, please turn my heart towards your religion. There are so many examples, and we don't have the time to go through, it, through, through all of them, where hearts turned during the time of Nabi Muhammad and throughout the centuries, even to this day. Enemies of Islam became loyal friends, loyal supporters, and champions of the faith. When the people of Taif chased our Prophet وسلم, out of their city, humiliated him, threw stones at him, big men and children, until the blood flowed, the angel of mountains appeared and offered to crush the city between the mountains. But Rasulullah said, No, I am not the angel, I am not the prophet of revenge, I am the prophet of mercy. Maybe their children will turn to Islam one day. And he was right. He was right. The whole of Taif became Muslim one day. Another example. Hind who was the widow of Abu, Abu Sufyan. She hired a, an Abyssinian slave and offered him freedom if he would kill the Prophet's uncle, Hamza. He was, a, he was an expert uh, javelin thrower. And some of us know the story. In the Battle of Uhud, his eyes were only on Hamza, and he waited for the right moment, and he threw his spear and he killed Hamza. And the Prophet was deeply grieved. It was his favorite uncle. When the battle was over, the slave whose name was Wahshi ibn Harb was so filled with remorse and uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent several messages to him 
to come to Islam, but he wouldn't. He wouldn't respond. He felt hopeless. He felt despair. He felt like that what he did was unforgivable. And what happened? Allah revealed a special verse, and when he heard this verse, his heart turned. And this verse is in Surah Al-Zumar, which says, Say on my behalf, O servants of mine who have acted recklessly against their own selves, do not despair of Allah's mercy. Surely Allah will forgive sins. Surely He is the one who is most forgiving, most merciful. And when Washi heard this verse, the clouds of despair opened up and he saw a glimmer of hope. And his heart turned and he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he asked for forgiveness. And he was forgiven. And he became one of the champion warriors, champion mujahideen. He fought in many battles for Islam. And this is what happens to people. Our hearts are very, very easily turned. We can easily turn from good to bad and from bad to good. That is why we need to make this dua all the time. May Allah always turn our hearts towards good, towards Allah's religion. Amen. Say Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, let us learn to be more merciful in our relationships. Let us learn to be merciful, husbands to wives, parents to children, children to parents, wives to husbands. We have our Uswatul Hasana, the best of examples in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And finally, I'm just going to quote two beautiful hadith. One says, Allah will reward gentleness what he will not reward for harshness. And another hadith says, be merciful to those on earth and he who is in heaven will shower mercy on you. So my dear brothers and sisters, to conclude our khutbah, surely Allah commands justice, good deeds, and generosity to others and to relatives. And he forbids all shameful deeds and injustice and rebellion. And he instructs you so that you may be reminded. Allah says, remember me, I will remember you. Be grateful to me and do not reject faith. And Allah knows remembrance of, all, remembrance of Allah without doubt is the greatest thing in life and Allah knows the deeds that you do. Inna laha ya'muru bil adl wal ihsan wa ita izil qurba wa yanha anil fakhshai wal munkari wal baghi يَعِذْرُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ فَاذْكُرُونِي أَشْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا تَسْنَعُونَ آمين أقيم الصلاة الله.